Welcome to EV News Weekly. I'm your host, Raj, and this is where we cover the electric vehicle news, or at least some of it, a bite-sized portion from the previous week. This week, we're talking about Ford and their F-150 launch and their jabs at Tesla during the presentation. We're also talking about Lucid's big investment that was just announced. We're talking about Rivian and their latest software updates and features that are being added to their trucks. And last but not least, USPS, yes, our friendly USPS is getting sued. For what? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, our first story is involving Ford and their F-150. Their F-150 is their most popular truck and it finally has gone electric. Vehicle sales uh, officially kicked off last week at their launch event where CEO Jim Farley took to the stage to announce this, announce their truck and take some jabs at Tesla. Here, listen. You can even charge other EVs for your friends that own Teslas. <laughs> our truck is here today because we rolled up our sleeves. We re rediscovered our roots around innovation. We worked together and now we're busting our butts to make more of these. You, our customers, are going to get capability no other EV truck can ever offer, but for thousands of dollars less than our competitors' trucks, whenever they actually go on sale. <laughs> we have every intention of being the number one electric pickup maker, and then, with the huge investments, $50 billion, in EVs, battery manufacturing, our expanded lineup, which you have not seen yet, we plan to challenge Tesla and all comers to become the top EV maker in the world. Now, Jim's not wrong there. The Cybertruck is at least another year away. And yes, the F-150 can charge other vehicles. It also has vehicle to home charging, which none of Tesla's vehicles have today. So he's right there. Um, and then there were some soft jabs, right? He talked about rolling up their sleeves and that's why Ford has gotten this truck out there hinting at that the Cybertruck is not here because Tesla's slacking off. I don't know so much that. Tesla is delivering a crap ton of vehicles just last year, just shy of a million vehicles delivered. So listen, competition is great and healthy and I'm excited to see Ford bringing this truck to market and officially starting deliveries. If you haven't checked out the F-150 Lightning, go and check it out. It's a great, amazing truck and has an amazing starting price of, I believe, just $39,000. So a great option for some that need a truck sooner than later. And I'm all for the furthering of electric vehicles and more specifically electric trucks. So welcome Ford. I wish you all the luck and congrats. Now Ford is projecting by next year to be on a rate of 150,000 Ford F-150 Lightnings to be delivered annually. So that's a really good ramp up. We'll see what Tesla can do when the Cybertruck officially launches. I'm excited, competition is good. Now, staying on the topic of Ford at the event, Jim Farley also teased that the F-150 Lightning was not going to be their only electric truck, thus hinting at something new on the horizon. I wish we could bring you all down there, but we're already pushing dirt down in Blue Oval City in Tennessee for another electric pickup truck that's different than this one. Now, Ford has always been the number one pickup truck company. And so it only makes sense for them to try to maintain that as they enter the EV space. So with the Ford F-150 Lightning, Jim Farley did reference that this new pickup truck would be in the F-Series family. So it would be a Ford F something. Now, Farley did clarify that this is going to be a brand new truck. Now, while it's a brand new truck, it still will fall under the F series family. So excited to see what are they going to come out with? I mean, Ford has always had the, the 150s, the 250s, the 350s going all the way up to these beefy, just tank like trucks. Now they electrified the F-150. What is going to be a brand new truck? Could it be something crazy looking to compete against a Cybertruck? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think this new truck is going to be? It's still going to be the F series, but do you think it's going to look anything different? What do you think is going to be different between this and the F-150 Lightning? 
I don't know, but hey, Ford, you are just pedal to the metal here. Could this be the end of Tesla? Has Tesla lost the truck game before they've even gotten into it? I don't know, but hey, competition is healthy like I've said before, so let's see what happens. Put those dukes up. Okay, next in the news is Lucid Motors. So Lucid Motors' largest investor, which is the government of Saudi Arabia, has just committed to a 100,000 order uh, of their vehicles, which is crazy. That's a huge investment and just solidifies Lucid as a company. Now, the government of Saudi Arabia does own 61% of Lucid, and they made a commitment to buy 50,000 vehicles with a future commitment to lock in an additional 50,000 vehicles. That's where this 100,000 came from. Now, this is uh, through a 10-year time frame, so it, there's still time for them to acquire all these vehicles, but as a smaller startup uh, company like Lucid, to have an order of that magnitude just locks you in and more officializes you as a company and is gonna ensure your long-term growth. So uh, congrats to Lucid on this. This is a, a, a huge thing for them. Now, a little backstory on the Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. They've invested about $1 billion into Lucid back in 2018. This was shortly after Elon Musk had uh, tweeted the most famous tweet um, that he's going to, that the funds have been secured and he's going to take Tesla private. Um, and that tweet was based on the Saudi Arabia's uh, public investment fund uh, for Tesla as well. So it's just funny how everything comes full circle. Now, these uh, vehicles that the investment fund has invested in is going to start delivering in the second quarter of 2023. Uh, so we'll see. And then going from there, there's going to be some sort of cadence of how many vehicles per quarter and, and so forth. So, uh, hey, great job, Lucid, on this and uh, more luck to you in your future growth as a company. On to the next story. Next in the news is Rivian. Now, Rivian, their CEO, RJ Scaringe, is learning a little bit from Mr. Musk over at Tesla on how to pay attention and respond to your customers via Twitter. And that's exactly what he's done. And through that, we've learned of two new features that are coming to the Rivian R1T. Rivian's electric truck is now gaining these two new software features. One is called sand mode. Now this is gonna optimize acceleration response, traction and stability controls to assist in maintaining forward momentum while you are driving in the sand. Now, Rivian R1Ts, they're meant to go off-roading, you're supposed to adventure in them, and so part of that adventure is being on a beach, riding through sand, and you want to make sure that your R1T can handle that sand appropriately. So, RJ Scringe, he posted that on Twitter that this would be coming soon and that's awesome. Now, along with that, a request came through Twitter uh, from a Twitter user directly to RJ asking for something similar to what Tesla has, which is called dog mode. This maintains the HVAC system in your vehicle while your pets are in the vehicle to further take care of your pets, not having to leave the windows open, causing your pet to maybe jump out. This allows you to leave the windows closed, keep the air uh, on and cool, thus, taking care of your animal. We love our animals and so do our Rivian owners. And so when it was brought up, RJ said, absolutely. And they are going to push that out as a future update. So an awesome job, Rivian. Way to follow in the tracks of Tesla, listening to your customers and bringing them what they need in the simplest, easiest format via OTA updates, over the air updates. I love it. Okay, and our last story, USPS. Those poor guys at USPS who work so hard to bring us our mail, uh, they not too long ago shared uh, this truck, their future truck that they want to replace their fleet with. And most people thought they're going electric. Uh, that was very wrong. They're actually gas-powered vehicles. And it caused quite a bit of controversy. And now they're getting sued. They're getting sued by California and 15 other states on their decision to get this gas powered instead of looking at a sustainable form of transportation. Of course, the argument is quite simple. The purchase of these fossil fuel vehicles will cause more environmental harm in decades to come. So it's an absolutely valid argument. I think USPS in their format of having a vehicle that's stop and go all the time and idling would be the best decision to go electric. So USPS, sorry, I gotta side with the people in the states and the government on this one. You need to relook at this investment and think about going electric as it'll be better for all. Anyway, 
those are the stories for last week. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next week. See ya.